Hey guys, welcome back to First Review. Now a while ago I did an in-depth analysis and review of the Wolf A1 Upper, which is a civilian version of the Taiwanese T91 assault rifle. And while the Wolf A1 proved itself very reliable, extremely durable, and more than accurate enough for most shooters, it did have a few areas which could use a few enhancements to really crank it up to 11. And while the Wolf A1 functions with every standard mil-spec AR-15 or M16 lower receiver, the Wolf A1 is not compatible with every accessory designed for that platform. Because of this, I went out of my way to determine which upgrades for the A1 are completely compatible and increase its combat effectiveness. So with that in mind, here are my top 7 upgrades to the Wolf A1 slash Taiwanese T91. While the military T91's edition of a collapsible stock is a huge improvement over the original T65 and its fixed stock, this was implemented before most militaries began issuing optics to a wide variety of soldiers. Consequently, the M4A1 style buttstock of the T91 doesn't play well with optics. Thankfully, the US military already devised a solution to this issue with their sloping cheek weld buttstock, or SCB, of the original M4 SOP mod program. And of the dozens of SOP mod inspired stocks, one of my all time favorites is the Arc Defense SOP mod. Standard issue on most Sig Sauer rifles and carbines, Arc Defense's stock is extraordinarily comfortable and functions with all mil spec buffer tubes. It includes the same wide cheek pad and dual battery compartments as more expensive models, but for only a fraction of the price. Plus, the stock uses the same quick adjust and quick detach lever as the real deal. So installing or removing the stock can be easily done without any tools. Other notable features include the rubberized, textured butt pad for increased weapon control and a set of QD sling mounts as well as standard sling loops. If a shooter intends to run their A1 with magnified optics, the Arc Defense, or really any quality SOP mod stock, is a must. Personally, I have a bad habit of white knuckling the hell out of guns when I'm trying to control the recoil. Consequently, I really like grips that are nice and soft, have a little bit of give to them, but are also very aggressively textured. Now one of these in particular that I really like is the Hexmag Sure Grip. Built from rubberized polymer and featuring the hexagonal pattern the company is known for, the Sure Grip provides a wider, more comfortable alternative to smoother, harder grips like the original A2. That combined with the soft extended tang gives shooters a better, grippier surface to control their A1. Inexpensive and effective, the only downside to the Sure Grip is that it can reduce accessibility to the fire controls for smaller handed shooters. Now why is this important on the A1? Well the A1 is a piston driven system and it happens to be very nose heavy. So if you have to utilize the weapon with one hand, if it's slippery or wet or oily or some such, it's going to be very difficult to control that weapon and retain it without an extra grippy rubberized pistol grip. Making a pistol grip like the Hex Mag Sure Grip an absolute must on your T91. Speaking of ergonomics, let's talk about the standard AR-15 mil spec trigger. In the simplest of terms, it sucks. Sure, with practice a shooter can learn to completely master it, but why put yourself through the frustration of fighting a long, heavy trigger? Instead, I recommend the trigger that I reviewed a few weeks earlier, the LaRue Tactical MBS-2. This two-stage trigger breaks at a light 4.5 pounds with a 2.5 pound first stage and a 2 pound second stage allowing the shooter an ultra-clean pull to help put rounds exactly where they want. The trigger isn't one of those mega-light single-stage competition triggers meant for fanning, but rather an all-around setup that works great in nearly every application. After personally using the MBTS on four different weapons, I already ordered a second and a third. Yes, they really are that great. In fact, I would argue that the single greatest upgrade for ergonomics on this list is the LaRue trigger, purely for how much better it makes the gun feel. Plus, compared to other brands, the MBTS2 retails for less than half the cost of most. Now you might be thinking, oh, it's just a trigger, how much of a difference could it make? Watch my video on potential accuracy versus mechanical accuracy, and you'll understand that the weight of the trigger, it's over travel, it's creep, it's reset, everything, plays heavily into ergonomics and a shooter's ability to put rounds on target. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, you probably know that I love Lancer's products. Paramount among these are their L5 Advanced Warfighter magazines. 
Built from either translucent or opaque high-density polymer, these magazines distinguish themselves from other polymer magazines by their inclusion of steel reinforcements. The steel lips provide protection against tearing or breaking, and the collar engages the top of the magazine catch, preventing it from warping or wearing out from hard use. Plus, Lancer's magazines aren't any more expensive than those from Magpul or Hexmag. Lancer AWM magazines are available in 10, 15, 20, and 30 round capacities, and in half a dozen different colors. Lastly, the base plate can be quickly removed without tools to allow for rapid disassembly and cleaning in a pinch. Overall, these magazines are hard to beat, and they're the only ones I keep in my bug out bag. I know it's not really an extensive review on them, but it's one of those things where they just freaking work. Compared to other brands where I've had crack feed lips, or failed magazines, or shoot, in the case of aluminum ones, I've had magazines get crushed inside of gear bags. These Lancers are damn near bomb proof. In my last upgrade guide, I talked about my favorite little bullpup, the X95. In that, I recommended the Elcan Spectre DR as my optic of choice. But I did listen to your comments on cost. So I tried to limit my budget to about half the cost of that Elcan, or around $1,300 to $1,500. And my favorite of these is the three and a half times magnification Trigicon TA110-C-100491. What a freaking name. Effectively, it's the LED ACOG. Where standard ACOG scopes utilize tritium for illumination, the LED model uses, you guessed it, an LED. While not as long lasting as tritium, the LED ACOG runs for 12,000 continuous hours on its number four brightness setting on a single AA battery. For a little perspective, that equates to a little over a year and a half. Plus, unlike the standard ACOG, the LED model can be dimmed to function properly with an NVG unit like the PVS-14. Other features include an ultra-fast 556 BDC Chevron crosshair with vertical subtensions designating proper holdover from 400 to 800 yards. Also, the somewhat limited magnification of this model may seem like a downside, but it provides an excellent balance of target identification and situational awareness with an FOV of 29 feet at 100 yards. Look, it's no secret that I'm a big fan of Silencer Co's sound suppressors. And the A1's piston system makes for an excellent host to one of my favorite centerfire rifle cans from this company, the ASR Saker 762. And the ASR part is very important, because even if a shooter can't own a suppressor where they live, the Saker's ASR brake does an incredible job at taming what little felt recoil the A1 has. This is due to its three-port design that redirects some of the muzzle blast to counter the rearward movement of the gun. The result is a carbine that feels like a rimfire rifle, but with excessive muzzle blast. Shooters looking to curb this blast and make their A1 SBRs or pistols more pleasant to shoot should take the next step and top that ASR break with a Saker suppressor from Silencer Co. Available in 5.56 and 7.62 configurations, these hefty all-steel cans are designed for full auto fire and can be configured in direct thread, trifecta, or ASR quick detach like this Saker 7.62 provided by Silencer Shop. While performance from a cartridge like 5.56, which depends heavily on high velocity, won't be movie levels of quiet or really even pleasant to shoot, it will still make the gun hearing safe. Plus, performance from the 7.62 version can be enhanced dramatically by swapping out the 30 caliber end cap with a 5.56 one. Just be sure to change it back if you intend to mount it on a 30 caliber weapon later on. It may involve a six month wait and a $200 tax stamp, but if you're gonna run an SBR, especially a 5.56 one, you owe it to yourself to toss a can on that bad boy and tame it. The Wolf A1 ships with a standard M16 A2 style charging handle, which can be best described as adequate. While a shooter can certainly get by with just the factory model, they do themselves an enormous disservice by not utilizing one with better ergonomics. Plus, since we're running a sound suppressor, it should also help dissipate some of the extra gas that normally wants to bleed through the latch and straight into the shooter's face. Thankfully, the engineers at PRI have us covered with their M48 gas busting charging handle. The PRI gas buster is the original suppressor friendly charging handle employed by the US Marines and SOCOM with their suppressed M4 carbines, the Gas Buster makes shooting a suppressed rifle or SBR a dramatically more comfortable experience. While normally, these guns tend to blast the shooter in the face with hot gas and what the term is, ejecta, the PRI handle redirects this gas down and away from the shooter's face. Sounds simple, but the difference is extraordinary. Additionally, the PRI Gas Busting Charging Handle is oversized for easier use with the left hand. 
where traditionally the M16 or M4 style charging handle was designed to be charged with the index and middle finger of the firing hand. Now obviously this gun is much heavier and much more expensive than the one we showed at the beginning of the video, but I would argue that it is infinitely easier to shoot and more combat effective. Now is every single upgrade on here absolutely critical for every shooter? No, but I would argue that these upgrades make any shooter armed with a T91 or a Wolf A1 much more effective, and they make the shooting experience dramatically more enjoyable. I mean, just the inclusion of a high quality optic like this Trijicon vastly improves your rate of hit at anything past 100 yards. Sure, there are guys out there with eagle eyes that can see things without any issues from far away, but for guys like myself who need glasses to actually see past their hands, I need optics to be able to engage targets successfully past about 250 yards. That said, I think the T91 and the Wolf A1 are perfectly capable as they come out of the box, but with these upgrades, you can really, really stretch its legs and push the performance to the next level. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I guess the last time I said it was up, but it's down the notification button down there. Click on there to be notified of any new videos that come out because YouTube keeps switching its algorithms in an attempt to stifle gun owners. Thanks guys.